Today we are talking about the best foods to lower your blood pressure and dump your blood pressure medications today. Well, let's get started. So one of my favorite is salmon and fatty fish. Now, salmon has, as you know, a lot of omega-3 fatty acids. So omega-3 fatty acids are anti-inflammatory and anything that is anti-inflammatory in your diet will reduce the risk of high blood pressure because inflammation drives the constriction of your arteries, which causes the high blood pressure. Now, the next one is pumpkin seeds. Now, pumpkin seeds you can buy in Costco or Sam's Club, like in big, huge amounts here. And it's great for your salads. And what is in it is amazing. It has magnesium, it has potassium, and it has arginine. Uh, now, we all know, or if you didn't know, potassium is extremely important because potassium helps with the blood pressure by eliminating the sodium and relaxing the blood vessels. But arginine also is one of the primary amino acid for formation of nitric oxide. And nitric oxide is an enzyme that allows relaxation. Even when you exercise, that's what you're producing. Your blood vessels are producing nitric oxide to open up your arteries. So it, that's why exercise is extremely helpful for blood pressure. But that pumpkin seeds as a food source will help you produce nitric oxide. So even studies show that people who consume pumpkin seeds regularly reduce their blood pressure, even in studies, not just anecdotal evidence. Another food source is beans and lentils. Again, it's very high in magnesium. It is high in potassium and fiber. And now lentils especially are so high in soluble fiber, not only helps your blood pressure, but also helps your cholesterol. So guys, if you are not trying this or didn't give a chance yet, try to slowly incorporate beans and lentils to avoid bloating. Because if you're not eating those foods normally, you will get bloated and you'll be like, what's going on? But yeah, slowly get started and you will see amazing benefits from them. Next in the list is berries, all sorts of berries, all sorts of berries with color. Even actually mulberries are very good. So basically they have something called anthocyanins, the substance that gives the color to the berries. Now that same product allows to increase the nitric oxide again, but also what they do, they inhibit the production of the enzymes that causes the vasoconstriction, which is closing up of your arteries. So remember berries, one portion at least every day. Now pistachios, is one of my favorite nuts well because in turkey that is the favorite nut so hazelnut and pistachios is all we eat peanuts is common in america we don't really eat that much peanuts and actually to be honest with you you know peanuts are overly consumed in the united states but benefits is not as near as pistachios so pistachios are amazing with the potassium content like we discussed potassium allows your blood vessels to relax and potassium eliminates or help eliminate the sodium in your body, which is the primary driver of excessive fluid in your body. So if you want to lose some weight, get rid of some of the water retention you have, you try to increase your potassium. So the potassium sodium ratio is very important. Stop those foods that are come in a package or come in a can. All the processed foods are full of sodium. So if you eat sodium, you're not gonna get the benefit from potassium as much. So because it's a ratio game, right? So the more potassium you have from vegetables and fruits and less sodium you're getting from the processed foods, you're getting the most benefit. Another one is carrot, guys. Carrot is amazing. It's crunchy, sweet, delicious. Of course, too much of it can spike your blood sugar, but carrots, especially when consumed raw, help a lot reducing the blood pressure they have uh, things called phenolic compounds and they help relax the blood vessels and they help produce nitric oxide as well the next is celery celery is awesome they have something called phytolytes in that plant source so it is also amazing to help lower the systolic blood pressure 
Tomatoes are next and tomatoes are great, especially when they are eaten as a whole food, not necessarily as a ketchup or a sauce. But when you use tomatoes, uh, fresh tomatoes in your dishes commonly, it helps a lot. I actually eat tomatoes at breakfast. It's not a bad combination actually to have cucumber and tomatoes and some feta cheese or the cheese of your choice is a really great combination. I also uh, watermelon, some red grapes uh, can be a good option for breakfast as well, especially when, when there's cheese, some salty and sweet, it goes well great together. So, but at any rate, uh, they have something called lycopenes and these lycopenes are also very helpful and tomatoes are full of potassium as well. Now you guys are going to be saying like, what about bananas? He didn't say bananas. Bananas is like the poster, right? The, for potassium. Well, uh, they are. I mean, they, they help with the potassium. But the problem with the bananas, like you all know, uh, especially the ripe bananas. And the bigger the bananas, the riper the bananas, the higher the blood sugar spike you're looking for. But as I said, if you're an active person, you're going to take a walk. You're going to be physically active. Eating a banana is not going to kill you. You can do that. If you want to eat banana, eat banana, but be physically active uh, if it is spiking your blood sugar. And there are a lot of people who will eat banana and they'll be just fine. Their blood sugar is not going to spike. But some people will do have spikes with the banana. And for those people, I either say either, either have less of it or just be more active in order to avoid blood sugar spikes with banana. But a great source of potassium, it also helps with the blood pressure as well. And how can we skip broccoli, right? Broccoli is extremely popular in popular science or popular health. And yet there is a reason for it to be popular. They have this pigment forming substance called flavonoids and they are extremely helpful with antioxidant features and high potassium features. Again, remember, if you want to remember from this video, something out of this video, just eat the colorful stuff. So the nature, God, I believe in God, you may not, but at any rate, what something, somebody puts those colors on those vegetables for a reason. Eat colorful. If you do not have color on your plate, you are missing out. So make sure you have a lot of vegetables and fruits that are full of colors. They are your best friend for your diabetes and for your, for your blood pressure. Now, I am a big fan of Greek yogurt as well. Now, my Turkish audience tell me that, uh, why are you not saying Turkish yogurt? Well, guess what? Greek yogurt is famous. I'm sorry. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. I'm Turkish and people, I love Greeks and I love Greek food and I love Greek yogurt. Sorry, my Turkish friends. There's no animosity between Turks and Greeks. They're friends. Come on. Anyways, <laughs> the... Greek yogurt is great, strained yogurt, whatever you call it, it helps with a lot of potassium. Now, it's a great uh, probiotic as well. And now you may not be a person, like a, a yogurt person, but try it. I mean, some, some fruits on top, I think it can help you uh, as a great snack for both diabetes and to help your blood pressure as well. And there are a lot of, of course, the herbs and spices that can help your blood pressure as well. A few of them are uh, saffron, lemongrass, garlic, cinnamon, cardamom, sweet basil, ginger, cilantro, celery seeds, you name it. All these spices also are helpful. They are also helpful when you use spices in your diet you will realize that you need less salt. So if you have this high salt addiction, if you're the person who just wants to add salt to your diet, add spice because your taste buds can be easily diverted from the salt and the spice will give you the taste that you're looking for and will reduce the need for adding salt to your food. So you may be familiar with me talking about spinach. Spinach is great unless you have a kidney stone problem. But spinach is full of fiber and antioxidants and nitrates, uh, which is the source for nitric oxide. So definitely spinach is something you can add on to your salads. You can cook it. But high fiber, high potassium content of spinach makes it a great addition to your diet as well if you have high blood pressure. So how about, the, how about the seeds, the flax seeds and chia seeds? Now, as you know, I love chia seeds. You can make a chia seed pudding for breakfast and it's good for your diabetes. They are very high in fiber, high in magnesium and potassium. 
So as a result, those these seeds, the chia seeds and the flax seed also is very good for your blood pressure. Now, of course, last but not least, I would say beets are very, very good. You can uh, add beets to your salads. You can uh, drink beet juice uh, or you can just take some beet capsules that are sell sold as a supplement. But adding beets really boosts your nitric oxide quite a bit. Not only helps your blood pressure, it even helps with your athletic, with your athletic performance as well. So consider beets in your diet as well, guys.